Hello everyone, let's talk about ghost towns. Abandoned settlements, each with their own sad story, draw tourists from all over the world. Lovers of all the things weird are attracted to the streets where nobody lives anymore. They enjoy the opportunity to experience the history of any ghost town. And frankly speaking, we kind of understand this desire. There's something frightening about them, yet fascinating at the same time. So let's take a walk through these creepy ghost towns together and learn their stories. Let's get it on. Hashima the island of Hashima is located in the East China Sea, about 15 kilometers from the Japanese city of Nagasaki. It was once just a rock sticking out of the water, but in the 19th century, the Japanese discovered huge deposits of coal here. Since 1810, the coal industry started to develop here. A hundred years later, Hashima became a major mining center and one of Japan's most important industrial facilities. The mines were in operation until 1974 when they ran out of coal. During this this time, Hashima mines were one of the most densely populated places on the planet. According to some reports, in 1959, there were 5,259 people living here per one square kilometer. But the mines were closed, and within a few weeks, the island was completely abandoned, turning it into a ghost town. For many years, visiting Hashima was forbidden and punishable by deportation. Suspicious, right? But later, UNESCO intervened and Hashima was approved as a World Heritage Site. Visits are now allowed, but only to a specially adapted part of the island. What's happening on the rest of the island is still a mystery. Bodhi Bodhi is a ghost town located in the western part of the USA, east of San Francisco in Mono County, California, on the border with Nevada. It all started with gold. In 1859, a certain W.S. Bodhi discovered a gold deposit here. In the same year, he perished in a blizzard, but members of the Bodhi family founded a town on the site and named it after the gold digger. Soon, another line of gold was discovered nearby, and Bodhi began to grow rapidly. By 1879, Bodhi had a population of five to 7,000 people. One legend says that in 1880, Bodhi was the second or third largest city in California. Sadly, a few years later, due to a decrease in revenues from the gold mining, residents began to abandon the city. By 1900, the population had decreased tenfold. A little later, a railroad leading to Bodhi was dismantled, and soon after, a major fire destroyed the commercial parts of the city, making Bodhi's demise inevitable. Today, the once large city has been turned into an open-air museum. Bodhi is considered to be the best preserved ghost town in the United States, with 170 buildings that look perfect both on the outside and the inside. Thanks to the dry climate, Bodhi's buildings are almost perfectly preserved. You might even believe that a local resident is about to appear around the corner, or someone will laugh or play a cheerful song. Pyramiden the Russian coal mining settlement on the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard is located in a picturesque place at the foot of a pyramid-shaped mountain. Previously, Pyramiden was the northernmost place in the world where coal was mined. In the 80s, up to a thousand people lived here. Not much, but if you remember how far the village is, it becomes clear that Pyramiden was a northern metropolis. There were not only residential houses, a hospital and a kindergarten, but also a swimming pool, a huge cultural and sports complex, a farm, and even a hotel. Rich black soil was specially brought here to plant flowers too, but all good things come to an end. The mine closed in 1998, people were relocated, and Pyramid End turned into a ghost town. Only in the second half of the 2000s did some life come back here, all for the sake of tourists. Now the locals claim that the village is not abandoned, but preserved. However, there aren't many locals. In summer, the population of Pyramiden barely reaches 20 people, all of them just employees at the Tulip Hotel. Only the hotel, the boiler station, and the garage continue to work in this abandoned, or if you prefer, preserved town. In Pyramiden, there is no mobile service and no internet, and to communicate with the outside world, you have to use satellite phones. Akamara 
25 years ago. There were 5,000 people living in the town of Arkamara in Abkhazia. Now it has only 36. Not thousands, just 36 people, mostly elderly, who have nowhere to go. There used to be coal mines, a hospital and a school in the village, but today everything looks abandoned. The school in Akamara closed in 1998. Animals roam through the city centre and they're fed by the remaining residents of the village because they are one of the few sources of food. There is a shop somewhere in town, but it's almost impossible to find. The Tvarcelli region, located in the mountains, was considered an elite place of residence. People waited several years to buy an apartment there. Today, beautiful, dying houses are buried under the vegetation, and the nature is gradually conquering back the place. Near Akamara, there are other ghost towns too, like Santuka, Poliana, and others. Today, tourists and post-apocalypse enthusiasts love to come here, but that won't save the village from slowly dying. Houtawan about 50 years ago, the Chinese village of Houtawan, located on an island in the eastern part of the country, was buzzing with life. There were about 2,000 fishermen living there with their families. The town was a major port, and fish was sent from here to the mainland. It looked like it was going to be like this forever, but the port gradually decayed, and the villagers soon began to leave the area. Eventually, there were only a few people left, those who had nowhere else to go. And then, nature did its job. The village was covered by grass, and the walls of the buildings began to collapse and were covered in ivy that looked like thick green carpets. They say that no more than 10 people live here today. Now, Hotowan is visited only by tourists to admire the fascinating emptiness of the green village and to take pictures. There are no new settlers either, because there's absolutely nothing to do here. Chinese Ghost Towns Abandoned cities, villages and islands were most often built decades ago, and sometimes hundreds of years ago, but Chinese ghost towns are unique. Empty apartment blocks, deserted streets with flashing traffic lights, hypermarkets without any goods or customers, kindergartens without children, universities without students, giant statues in the middle of empty squares, museums without exhibits or visitors. These towns were built quite recently, and certainly not for the filming of a new post-apocalyptic film. China is actively trying to urbanize, moving people from villages to cities. Well, trying to. The government allocates money. New cities are built, but then they remain empty. The problem is that apartments are just too expensive and people can't find jobs. Therefore, these new cities turn into ghost towns. However, they do not deteriorate with time. The government keeps a close eye on them. Lawns are mowed, streets are washed, and in some places there's even public transport. All in all, there is everything for life here, except for people. By the way, online, you can find an interesting theory about these cities. Some users claim that China is building empty megacities in case of war. In the event of a bomb attack, it'd be too expensive to restore the inhabited cities. So, homeless people will be relocated to these empty cities prepared beforehand. Coleman's Cop there are ghost towns in the deserts too. Although it's much harder for them to fight against the influence of time and the forces of nature, such places still exist. Coleman's Cop is located in southern Namibia, in the vast coastal desert of Namib. It has been an abandoned city for more than 60 years now. In 1908, when Namibia was still under German control, a railway worker named Zacharias Lawala found a diamond while clearing the sand. Soon, there was a diamond fever in the region. Many must have heard of the California Gold Rush. It was something like that, but instead of gold, everyone was just obsessed with diamonds. According to some reports, by the end of 1914, about a thousand kilograms had been extracted from the ground. Of course, along with the volume of diamonds, the city kept growing. There was a hospital, a ballroom, a power plant, a theater, a casino. But after the Second World War, the reserves of diamonds gradually ran low, and people began to move south to other deposits. The city was finally abandoned in 1956, and since then, the desert has been slowly reclaiming its territory. Tourists who visit Coleman's Cop today wander through the houses, sinking up to their knees in the sand. Rogudi Vecchio 
If you're offered to look at some Greek ruins, you'll probably not be particularly interested. What, another tour for a couple of pictures like a history book? Pfft. However, remains of Greek settlements can be found not only in Greece. For example, the ghost town of Ragudi Vecchio, the last Greek settlement in Italy, is lost in the mountains of southern Italy. Here, you will not find a temple of Apollo or painted amphorae, only stones, bottles, and dilapidated houses. However, Ragudi Vecchio was founded in the 11th century. The Greeks began to colonize this region of Italy as early as the 8th century BC, so there's nothing surprising about it. And it is worth saying that this settlement was inhabited for a long time. Only after two very severe floods in 1971 and 1973 was Ragudi Vecchio declared completely uninhabitable, and the locals were relocated to neighboring villages. Now only the ruins are left on the site of the legendary town. Burj Al Babas. What you see now is not some editing, nor a strange Disneyland ripoff, neither a screenshot from The Sims. These are absolutely real villas built in Turkey, built and then abandoned. The construction of Burj Al Babas began in 2014. It was supposed to be a luxury town for the rich people with villas near the Turkish city of Madunu, and who doesn't feel like a king when they have a lot of money. This is probably why the developer decided to build mini castles instead of ordinary houses. The center of the complex was supposed to include a shopping center, a cinema, and other facilities open to residents. In general, it wasn't a bad idea, but the execution was very poor. The total cost of the project was more than $200 million, and each house would cost from $400 to $500,000. In several years, the Sarot Group managed to sell a few hundred houses to clients from Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia, but soon the sales stopped and the company went bankrupt. According to the architect of the complex, this was related to the changes in oil prices. As of January 2019, 587 of the planned 732 houses had been completed, and today these tiny castles stand in the middle of nowhere, gradually collapsing. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great.